The story of the Israelites' journey to the Red Sea is, is one of my favorites. It's one that I always enjoy remembering and reading about every year this, this time of year during this, this, this festival season. Because it has so many aspects of, of a great story. There's an epic journey, impossible situations, spectacular events, and triumph over evil. And of course, this wasn't just a story. It, it actually happened. It's really kind of hard to imagine what it must have been like for the Israelites to have been free, or have been slaves for so long, to, to be set free, to leave Egypt, and be on their way to a better life, only to be met with so many difficult and seemingly impossible situations. Now, as I look at that story this year, I was, I was struck by how I think there is a, there's a parallel with our own spiritual journey. That journey from Egypt to, to the Red Sea, I think, has a parallel with our, our path that we take, with our spiritual journey to the kingdom of God. So I want to look at that, look at the story again, and bring out some specific points that I think relate to that. So let's start in Exodus 13. We're just going to read a few aspects, or a few passages from the story to, to get some context and to get some, some uh, remembering of, of certain events that I want to bring out. So Exodus 13, starting in verse 17. So it says, when I'm going to read, uh, this is also from the, the NIV. It says, um, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though it was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert road to the Red Sea. Let's skip down to verse 21. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. So that they could travel by day or night, neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. So what I want to bring out here is that God led the Israelites out of Egypt on a very specific route. It wasn't Moses that was deciding where to take the Israelites. It was God through, through the pillar. God was in control. And it, it wasn't the shortest path to, to get to the promised land, but it was the way that God wanted them to go because he had a plan. Let's go ahead and move on to Exodus 14, starting in verse 1. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to turn back and encamp near Phi Hiloroth, between Migdol and the sea. They are to encamp by the sea, directly opposite Baal Siphon. Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. So God's having them backtrack a bit to make it look like they don't really know where they're going. He also leads them to a place that would ultimately cause them to be trapped by Pharaoh's army. And this was all, of course, a part of God's plan. As we get to Exodus 14, verse 10, we can see, uh, we see that with the Red Sea behind them and the Egyptians approaching them, in the same way that they came, the only way out, we see that the Israelites are, ter the Israelites are terrified. And they cry out to God and Moses, thinking that they're going to die. I'd probably feel the same way 
After a triumphant departure from slavery in Egypt, the Israelites now seem doomed to be killed by the Egyptians. There seemed to be no way out. Now, wouldn't it seem confusing that God would deliver them from Egypt only to allow them to die a few short days later? Why, why would he do that? As I'm sure many of us know, often it's hard to understand what God has planned. In verse 19, we can see that God is in control. The pillar went from leading them to protecting them. Let's read that in verse 19. It says, Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other side. So neither, so neither went uh, near each other all night long. God had a plan for what he wanted to happen. He led them and he protected them. He didn't forget about them, of course. But he needed the Israelites to be trapped by the sea so that he could perform one of the greatest miracles ever recorded to deliver Israel yet again and show the Egyptians that he was the all-powerful God. So, like the Israelites, we are on a journey to the kingdom of God. Also, like the Israelites, our journey is still hard after leaving Egypt and putting sin behind us. Do we ever feel that we're going on the wrong road? Are we following our pillar to guide us through difficult times? Or are we the one that thinks we know a better way to go? You have to think that some, some Israelite probably thought, this is not the right way, we should be going this way, right? But sometimes, and sometimes we ourselves want to have that more direct route. We want to shortcut things. Do we ever feel like we can't see a way out of our situation? That we're trapped by the distractions, the temptations, and the pressures that we face every day, and there's a, seem a seemingly endless sea behind us. Of course, each year we renew ourselves and our commitment to God through the Passover. We do our best to put sin out and righteousness in our lives during the days of unleavened bread. And during these days of unleavened bread, hopefully we've been able to leave Egypt further, to become closer to God, and to trust him to guide us even more in our lives. Of course, he gives us the Holy Spirit to help us along the way, because it's certainly not easy. Christ told us this in Matthew 7:14 that narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. We can't always know what God is doing and why he allows certain events to happen or why we go through certain trials. Like the Israelites who were led to what seemed like a dead end, we must have faith that God has a plan and will direct our path. I like to often recall Romans 8, 28, when faced with challenges. And that verse says, all things work together for good for those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. We've committed our lives to Christ because without his sacrifice, we wouldn't have a way out. We would be trapped by sin just like the Israelites were trapped by the Egyptians. Satan would defeat us, but we do have a way forward. Our calling, our conversion and redemption is, is a miracle, and it gives us a way out, a path forward through the sea to the kingdom of God. I'm gonna leave you with the lyrics to a song. It's a song about grief and hope and encouragement 
and trusting God and having faith that he will always be there to give us strength and to show us the way. The song is called Red Sea Road, and it's by Ellie Holcomb. And this is just one of the, the chorus lines. It says, we will sing to our souls. We won't bury our hope. Where he leads us to go, there's a red sea road. When we can't see the way, he will part the waves. And we'll never walk alone down a red sea road. <laughs> 